So what I want to do is talk a little bit about when you're thinking about state systems, what is the approach that we're taking, taking all of this information into account that you've heard today. And the first big question from the state perspective is always, where the heck do you start? So you're, we have a lot of information about what happens in classrooms. We have all these initiatives around moving quality up. And from the state perspective, we have very limited resources. Our contracts are limited, our staff are limited, and what do we do to support um, improved quality? So what I'm gonna do is walk through what we saw some of the biggest challenges, um, some of the context, what our goals were, and then the approach that we've been taking to kind of build a system, a coaching system that we think will work specifically for our child care providers. I'm gonna focus on that, and then Head Start to participate in quality rating. So challenges for us all to think about. One, you've, someone mentioned already, and that's the culture and the work environment, which is very different in child care, Head Start, and Pre-K, um, in terms of, of how, what the culture is around learning um, within those environments. The second in the child care world is the shortage of a high quality workforce and continuity change and staff turnover, which is huge. And then the third is we've struggled with the whole concept of the adult learning environment, which was also mentioned, in that a lot of our child care workforce didn't have good experiences in school. And so when you go in and coach them, you're coming up against this uh, resistance of being up, um, from their history. So in the context, in Kentucky, we had done a really good job of an integrated PD system. So we had trainer's credential, we had director's credential, we had articulation agreements, we had core content. We had put all these things in place to integrate our system across Head Start, Child Care, and Pre-K. What we hadn't done is integrate our PD services. So we had this core content and everyone was implementing it in a slightly different way. We had credential that only some folks were, were using. And so over the last year and a half, we set two big goals in terms of how do we support professional development for our workforce. The first one, and Mary Louise just mentioned this, was our coaches, and I'll talk to you in a minute about who they are, um, really have a program level versus a classroom level focus. Because our coaches work on two big things. And I'm gonna talk about the 75 coaches that are under my contract. Uh, 45 of the coaches their goal is to improve quality in the quality rating system and move folks up. The other 30 coaches are supposed to help child care providers meet licensing requirements. So what you see in there is there is some, um, we're not yet to the point of talking about best practice because until we get our folks to meet licensing requirement, they can't get into STARS. If they don't get into STARS, then, then you know we just have them kind of hanging out there. And our STARS program yet um, is one of the first quality rating systems uh, in the country, and so our standards aren't quite where we want them to be yet in terms of curriculum assessment, but they're not meeting those yet, so we gotta work on that. So we have a program um, focus. The second is we felt very strongly that we need to build the capacity of the directors in those programs, because the directors really are the folks that we want to coach on some of the general, the general practices that need to happen. And so we know we can't, we don't have enough folks to go in and work on everything. How can we leverage the directors in those programs to help us with some of the coaching and then we come in and provide coaching beyond that. So our approach was, and I don't know where John went, but I was really excited when he was talking this morning. Um, our, because I'm in a leadership, you can imagine what, what my approach is. Um, our approach was really, to build what we called a culture of distributed and transformational leadership across our coaches. And we wanted to start with the coaches that we had in the field. So there are 110 coaches. We built a collaborative network across our quality rating system coaches, our child care aware coaches, our community health, our child care health consultants, and our early childhood mental health consultants with the understanding that if they were all going into programs and providing different supports, things weren't gonna work really well for those programs. And so we've built a, a community of practice, a professional learning community, community across those networks, 
We've developed a linked TA and integrated data system so that anyone who's in a program has access to what the other person is doing. And so if a community health consultant is in there, they can see what the quality rating staff are doing. They can see what the child care aware staff are doing. And they're not supposed to be all in there at the same time doing something different. <laughs> they're supposed to be coordinating that. And what we wanted really was to develop a system where they became leaders and that they provided that support to directors to become leaders so that we were building a distributed leadership network um, across both our TAs and eventually at the program level. So I think that's my five minutes, maybe. <laughs> sure, that's the fastest I've talked in a long time. <laughs> So now we're going to hear from Sarah Neville, Mor Neville Morgan, and as somebody with a last name that's always hard to pronounce, I'm sorry, I might have to get it wrong, uh, and her work at, um, with the Race to the Top and the CARES Project in California. Thank you. For my last name, I always say you can either think of Neville Chamberlain, the Neville Brothers, or if you're a Harry Potter fan, there's also a Neville and Harry Potter. Yeah. Depends on sort of, I guess, what age group you might be in for each of those references. But um, I'm actually going to talk about two major things. And I'm going to start with our motto phrase, which is, because we're California. Which, as annoying as that is, we often say in complete irony as we laugh at ourselves within our office. But um, first I'm going to talk about something called CARES and CARES Plus, which started at First Five California. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about Race to the Top, the Early Learning Challenge. And I am from Chicago originally, so I can talk very fast. <laughs> so slow me down if I get out there. But um, in, at First Five California, in about 2000, I started in May and was told that within the next two months we had to release something around professional development for the early childhood workforce. And I was completely clueless, clueless. I came from UC Davis working in a lab school, and someone said, call Marcy Whitebond. <laughs> so I think I called her daily for the next couple months as we really tried to launch something on CARES. And um, it started really as a professional development that was looking more on retention. So the focus was, especially in places like the Bay Area, everybody was leaving for the dot-com world. So this is a totally different universe, I think, than where we are now. But if you could leave early childhood, become a VP of something, and quadruple your salary, we were losing people, especially if they had degrees. So how did we get some sort of professional development out there for that type of workforce in that situation? So it really was sort of more this blanket um, piece. We then kept evaluating it and worked with Pace at UC Berkeley and actually Bridget Hamry was one of our key evaluators so it's an interesting dynamic as it goes through. Um, and came back to the fact that there were limited resources. We needed to be much more intentional about our supports and what was sort of allowable for the workforce in that professional development and really start focusing more on child outcomes. First Five California is funded through Proposition 10, which was an initiative started by Rob Reiner and really is a zero to five funding stream. So when we were looking at the zero to five funding stream, it's really the focus of an, on improved child outcomes, which is what we're all passionate about, but how do we focus that professional development on it? So through multiple evaluations and iterations, we ended up with something called CARES Plus, which really focused on something very intentional. The, the workforce had to get a professional development plan, they had to meet with a CARES advisor and really specifically lay out their goals and outcomes, and we added a new piece, which was the class, and really thinking through what could we get out there at a broader level around just awareness of what might make a difference. So working with TeachStone, we had a class overview component, which all of the participants had to take. And in California, I have to put these numbers out there, there are 2.6 million children zero to five. 1.9 million of them are in the areas that we're targeting with our race to the top. And we have over 140,000 early educators that are in sort of the professional part of the workforce. That's nothing to do with our family, friend, and neighbor, which is also extremely huge. But when you think of numbers at that scale, it becomes extremely overwhelming. So because we're California, we really go with a local model. So it, with CARES, how do we reach out and partner with county commissions, which also had money, to make this successful and roll it out in such a way? So I think having sort of a web-based system with class and being able to get drive people to something that was more accessible was uh, 
a successful way to get a lot of information out there. Because we're California, it had to be done in Spanish as well as English. We'd also love to have it in Chinese and Vietnamese and a couple other languages. But it was able to then be developed in Spanish, which helped a lot with the outreach. There were other parts to it um, and still are part of our CARES model. And that is um, different components so that they could choose training that comes out of our child development division at the California Department of Ed. Um, and CSEFL is one of those, so that's a core area that we look at. They also, we wanted to continue the focus on units. Through CARES and that whole iteration, we were really trying to professionalize the field and get people up to their AAs and BAs. And then we also had an MTP part, so people could actually participate in MTP. Um, and there's a pre and a post that was randomly assigned with the class throughout all of those conditions. So if they were choosing coursework, if they were choosing um, to do the training, or if they were in MTP, there would be that. So we don't have the, the results on that yet, but it is something I think that's extremely exciting. We also had supports built in so that um, the CARES programs at the local level could use funds for books, for lending libraries, for tutors, um, linking classes so that if they were needing to get their general ed classes, which math is very, very scary, so how do you link that into ECE and make it more familiar and comforting, um, as well as cohorts, and I know Marcy will talk a lot about cohorts, but, or has done great research on it, and a lot of that came out of CARES and how we could support cohorts as they went through that. So that's sort of the, how we integrated class into our professional development piece um, in California, and then in our Race to the Top work, because we're California, we also went with a unique model and really did a locally driven approach, once again wanting to capture all of those local dollars that they had in the first five county commissions. And uh, initially in our application, instead of having a QRS that was tiered across the state, our administration said that needed to happen at the local level. The feds came back to us and said, that's great, but you need to have at least two common tiers. And we have spent the last year working with our consortia, which are 17 of them in 16 counties. So that 1.9 million children zero to five are the children represented by those 16 counties. And like one of them is LA, which has two consortia. And that is bigger than a lot of states out there. So how did we work with them to develop something that really tried to focus on evidence-based elements. And I will say we kept taking them back to all the research on effectiveness factors. So if we know it's really important, how do we integrate that into our QRIS model? So in our application, we had this sort of evidence-based quality continuum framework that wasn't tiered. We then worked with a consortia to tier it and had this aha moment that looking at other states and really trying to say, how can we look at child outcomes with our QRIS? How do we really focus the elements in this on child outcomes? Came to the point that we had a lot of just PD in there or just go attending a training and pieces that were harder to rate or objectively rate. And with the consortia, we removed over half of the elements from the rating part of the QRIS and moved them into just a professional development pathways piece. So we're sort of fleshing out something we call our quality improvement and professional development pathways. But in the part that we rate with limited resources and trying to scale up, even if it's only 16 counties, so 16 counties are enormous, so how do we do that effectively? Narrowing what we rated, we hope will make it more manageable. I think it's still going to be as we move into implementation a lot, but we're hoping with that. So one of the pieces that really came out in that is how are those elements focused on child outcomes? So we actually had a lot of conversations with Teachstone around class, and originally we didn't have scores in it. Our consortia came to agreement that they wanted to have scores and they wanted to have cut points that were linked to child outcomes. So as we went through, we actually did end up with a QRIS matrix that the consortia will implement that has class fully integrated with those scores. It also though, as we look at those pieces, does have, still have the education of the workforce. So we still have both of those pieces. And I think, as Marty said, that alignment, I am constantly saying as we go out there, it's theory to practice. So that's great that you have this coursework and this knowledge. How are you making sure that's in your practice? So that integration piece still needs to be fully captured and moved forward. Um, and I think we haven't looked at the context of the settings within that so much, but that's sort of the California. Thanks.